For this anniversary lecture, I invite the SGF to invite our special guest of honor. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to invite His Excellency the Vice President, that special guest of honor, to come forward and make his speech. Your Excellency, sir. You can kindly sit down, please. You can. Born in Zaria in 1962, she calls herself a media personality, a multi-talented broadcaster, a consultant, a poet, and a writer, but she is much more than that. She is an activist, she is a feminist, and for well over two decades in primetime television. She was Nigeria's answer to Oprah Winfrey, Krishana Amampo, Katie Couric, and of course, Barbara Walters role in Tuan. Thank you so much, Eugenia Abu. Your Excellency, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator Dr. George Akume, the Chief of Staff to the President, Right Honorable Pemi Bajabia Miller, the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Dr. Folashe Deyemi Esan, members of the Federal Executive Council President, Special Advisors and other senior aides to the President, Permanent Secretaries, Directors General, and heads of extra ministerial agencies and parasatels, members of the diplomatic corps, our royal fathers, elder statesmen and captains of industry, distinguished presenter of the anniversary lecture, Dr. Adego, Adego Roy, members of the organizing committee of Nigeria's 63rd Independence Anniversary Public Lecture, honored guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Today we gather to honor Nigeria's journey to redefine its destiny. Today we stand on the precipice of history to reflect upon a nation that has defied the predictions of doomsayers, a nation that has become the metaphor of resilience. Over the past 63 years, we have not only survived, but thrived because of our collective resolve our commitment to progress, and the enduring spirit of unity that binds us together from Abba down through to Ogbomosho, to Zalia, to Burning Kebbi, despite the conspiracies of minor vested interests. While this anniversary offers us another opportunity to acknowledge the close regional bonds that kept us standing as Africa's most populous nation and largest economy, we are here to remind ourselves that the future we promise Nigerians isn't an empty performance for electoral papers. You can't renew the hope of the nation unless you are prepared to pursue bold reforms. And President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has undertaken to build a country while the economic independence of each citizen is guaranteed, while none of us has to depend on unspecified handouts to earn a living. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our history, like that of every nation, isn't just a record of surviving attacks on our sovereign integrity and social welfare. Our history underscores the commonality of our shared humanity. The most recent memory 
The COVID-19 pandemic, for instance, brought this starkly to the fore. The tragedy reminded us that viruses do not discriminate based on ethnicity or religion, and that our strength as a nation is driven by our collective path in the ideal that define us and the moral character of our leaders. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I love Nigeria. I believe in the Nigeria project. Not because of my best interest. I am 57 years old. As far as UNDP, the average age of a Borno man is 47. So I'm well past my prime. Certainly not because of my family. I have only a wife and three kids. I believe in Nigeria because if Nigeria works, the black man works. The last election was probably one of the most divisive elections in the contemporary annals of Nigerian history. Ethno-religious and regional poll lines were deliberately manipulated for political ends. But it is pertinent to mention your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that the most northern of northern states is Sokoto. The Nigerian candidate lost by a few thousand votes to the regional candidate in Sokoto. The most Christian of northern states is Benue. Benue is 90% Christian. And the Nigerian candidate defeated the religious candidate in Benue state. Courtesy of the Prince of Wanune, the mercurial George Akume and his team. The most southern of southern states, the most southern of south-south states is Rebus. Again, the Nigerian candidate defeated the religious candidate in Rebus state. What is it of the enigmatic mercurial Nyesom Ezenwawike? He's unavoidably absent. He had to go around to attend to some functions. And the Nigerian political climb is populated by careful snails who do not want to upset the apple cart. In the First and Second Republics, we have the Adegoki Adelabus, the Bosari Adelakuns, the Kingsley Mbadwes, the Sam Bakwes, the Abubakar Rimis, the Sabo Bakinzuos, the Aminu Kanos, the Abdel Kadel Balarebe Musas, the Bala Usmans. But now, the most colorful character is, is probably we some near some wiki. Unfortunately, he's coming to Abuja has robbed out of his theatrics. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the future of a great nation is not determined by the occurrence of a socio-economic challenge. The future of every nation rests on the intention, sincerity, and innovative ideas of its leaders and their commitment to implementing them. This is why President Bola Tinubu's eight-point agenda remains an oasis in a scorching sun. We cannot renew the hope of the nation unless we deliver on our promise to drive post security and eradicate poverty. We cannot foster economic growth and nurture job creation unless we facilitate access to capital, enhance national security, and optimize the business environment for our enterprises. We are going to uphold the rule of law and fight corruption to design the Nigeria of our dream. We can't achieve any of these unless each citizen remains a strategic partner in pursuit of our ultimate national interest. At 63, we recognize that what has sustained us and propelled us forward is our collective belief that overcoming the challenges we have inherited necessitates sacrifices, especially from us, the leaders, 
We are driven by the realization that these sacrifices are not for naught. They are investments in a brighter future. Investments that will redeem the future, the fortune of our great generation, and guarantee the well-being of generations to come. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the present administration also recognizes that the sacrifices made by each Nigerian will never be in vain. Such solidarity with our economic revival strategy, from the bustling streets of Lagos to the serene landscape of Inugu, has inspired our focus on diverse sectors, from agriculture to digital technology, from healthcare to education. We knew from the starting point of this race to serve the people that the track will not be without its holes and ponds. We knew that challenges will arise and obstacles will test our resolve. But as our history has shown, Nigerians are too ambitious to be broken by a temporary setback. We are going to emerge from this space of our reform stronger, each of us with renewed hope, as we honor the labor of our heroes past, as we reflect on the values and principles that have brought us this far, as we strive to excel in all that we do, and as we work together towards a future where opportunity knows no bounds, let's remember that our most potent weapon is the overriding resolve of the majority to choose unity over chaos and democracy over anarchy. Thank you and happy independence. And Your Excellency, 